hello so in this video i will take you through uh, example number two from optimization and remember we are still looking at one variable case my name is elias so let's quickly look at the problem that we are solving today a firm's short run production function is given by q equal 6l squared minus 0.2l cubed where l denotes the number of workers we are required to find the size of the workforce that maximizes output and hence sketch a graph of this production function we are also required to find the size of the workforce that maximizes the average product of labor you may also be interested in finding the workforce size of the workforce that maximizes the marginal product of labor but for this one we are looking at the average product of labor and then we will be required to calculate the marginal product of labor and the average product of labor at that maximum level of output that we we found in part two and then we are required to indicate our observation let's begin by finding the size of the workforce that maximizes output and let us sketch the graph of the production function all right so to find the workforce that maximizes output remember we need to work with the first order condition as well as the second order condition so let's begin by first getting the first order derivative of the production function and if you recall here we said you drop the two the two that you drop here will multiply the six to become 12 and here you drop the three the three you drop will multiply the 0 0.2 to make 0 0.6 and then we subtract one from the power we do the same from the first l where we dropped the two here and when you do that you have 12 l minus 0 0.6 l squared all right so this is our first order uh, derivative and then we need to use the first order condition and with the first order condition we equate the first derivative to zero so which means we're equating q dash uh, to zero and q dash is what we found to be 12 l minus 0 0.6 l squared so we equate this to zero and we solve for l this function looks uh, straightforward so all we are doing here is we're going to divide it through what i've done is that i've divided through by negative 0 0.6 so if i divide it all by 0 point by negative 0 0.6 it will become negative 20 and if i divide uh, negative 0 0.6 by negative 0 0.6 it will become positive one so the coefficient then will become one and then zero divided by 0 0.6 will remain with zero so all i've done here is to divide it through by negative 0 0.6 from here i'll factor out my l because l is common so i'll factor out l what i'll remain with is l minus 20 is equal to zero and from here we can conclude that either l is equal to zero or l minus 20 is equal to zero if you solve our l here will be 20 or l will be zero so we have found the two values for labor or for the workforce it is now time for us to determine which of these two will maximize the output and remember for us to do that we need to get to the second order uh, condition but before we do that, let's try first and find the corresponding vertical axis coordinates. So we have our labor, which will go, uh, which will denote the horizontal axis coordinate. We need our vertical axis coordinate. So to do that, we're going to get labor of zero and substitute into the production function. We will do the same with the labor of 20. We will substitute into the production function. So at L equal zero, what we have when we do the substitution, we'll have six open bracket zero squared minus 0 0.2 open bracket zero close brackets cubed. And when you simplify this, all you will get is zero, which means one of our stationary points is zero comma zero. So we have found one stationary point 
where labor units are equal to zero and we found that the total output produced when labor is zero will also be zero all right let's go to another stationary point now this time around remember we had l of zero and l of 20. so we have found the stationary point when labor is zero let's find the stationary point when labor is 20. we will do the same thing we will substitute this 20 into the uh, production function where there is labor so we have six open brackets 20 close bracket squared minus 0 0.2 open brackets 20 close bracket cubed and when you simplify this you have uh, 2,400 representing 20 squared times 6 and 1,600 representing 20 cubed times zero, negative 0 0.2. So we have negative, actually, negative 1,600. So when you subtract 2,400 minus 1,600, what we'll get is 800. So we have another, you know, stationary point, which is 20, 800. So when we get a uh, 20 units of labor, our total output produced given that production function will be 800. Let's now check between labor equal zero and labor equal 20, which of the two is the maximum point and which one will be the minimum point. And to do that, we need to use the second order condition. And the second order condition requires uh, informs us that if the second order derivative of a given function evaluated at a given value, in this case, we're looking at zero and 20. If that second order de uh, derivative evaluated at any of these values is negative, then the stationary point involved is a maximum. And if the second order derivative evaluated at any of these points is uh, positive, then the stationary point in question is a minimum. So let's go ahead and use the second order condition. So our second order uh, derivative requires that we differentiate the first derivative or we differentiate the production function twice. So recall that our first order derivative is 12L minus 0.6 L squared. So I'll differentiate this function again. I guess by now you are familiar with derivatives, so you should be able to get your, uh, your second order derivative from here, which will be 12 minus 1.2 L. And then we recall that uh, we found L of zero and L of 20. So we'll get the L of zero and substitute into the second order derivative, remove the L and bring in the zero and then simplify. We will do the same with the L of 20. Then from there, we will be able to make a conclusion as to whether a given stationary point is a maximum or a minimum. All right, so in determining the nature of the stationary points, we start with L equals zero. So I'll get my zero and D, replace the L in the second order derivative. So where there is L, I'll put a zero. So zero times negative 1.2, this one will be uh, zero, and 12 minus zero will be 12. And because 12 is a positive value, it means that labor equals zero, and the corresponding vertical axis um, coordinate, we have a minimum point. So since second order derivative evaluated as zero is positive, the stationary point 0, 0, 0,0 is a minimum point. Let's also do the same with uh, labor equal 20. So we will substitute into the second order derivative. So where there's L, we put 20 in this second order derivative. So when I put 20 here, I simplify that I'll have negative 12. Because this part 1.2 times 20 will give me negative 24. This part here will be negative 24. And the 12 minus 24 will be uh, negative 12. And since this value is a negative, the stationary point 20, 800 is a maximum point or is a local maximum. So the question wanted us to find the level of labor. 
that maximizes output. The size of the workforce, that maximizes the output. And we can see from here that the size of the workforce that maximizes output is 20 units of labor. All right? So hence, 20 labor units will maximize the output. Let's now sketch that uh, production function. All right, so first I will plot output on the vertical axis and the labor units on the horizontal axis. The first thing to do is to recall the stationary points that we found. We found 0, 0, and we also found 20, 800. So I will plot these uh, stationary points on my graph. So you can see 0, 0 here and 20, 800 here. The next thing to do is to note that 0, 0, according to the second order condition, 0, 0 here is a minimum point. So I know that my graph will form a turning point here and it, it will face upwards. We also noted that 20, 800 is a local maximum. So my graph will come and open downwards here. So which means if I was to draw my graph, it will come from this side form a minimum, start going up, and then come and form a maximum here. All right? So that the graph will look like this one. So this is a graph for Q equal 6L squared minus 0.2L cubed. Hence, we have just sketched our graph for the production function. Let's move on and answer the second question. The second question or problem wanted us to find the size of the workforce that maximizes the average product of labor. What we found is the size of the workforce that maximizes output or that maximizes production. In this second problem, we are required to find the level of the workforce that will maximize the average product of labor. Which means before you go ahead and do your first uh, order condition, first you need to find the average product of labor. So given Q equals 6L squared minus 0.2L cubed, we need to divide the total product by labor to get the average product. So average product of labor is equal to Q over L, where Q is total product and the L is a workforce. So our Q is 6L squared minus 0.2L cubed. Dividing this by L will leave us with 6L minus 0.2L squared. So we have our average product of labor. Now that we've found the average product of labor, let's go ahead and find the size of the workforce that will maximize the average product of labor. Take note, we are not differentiating the total product here. What we will differentiate is the average product. And it will be this average product that will lead us again to using the second order condition. So the first order condition we will apply on the average product of labor. And the second order condition will equally be applied on the average product of labor. So let's go ahead and find the stationary point or the level of labor that exists at the stationary point. So the first thing we need to do is to differentiate our average product of labor with respect to L. Differentiating this function will give us 6 minus 0.4L. And from here, we go to our first order condition that requires that we equate the first derivative of the average product of labor to zero. When we do that, we have six minus 0.4L equals zero. And rearranging this function, we will take our 0.4L to the other side and become positive. So we have 0.4L is equal to six. And then we divide through by 0.4 and what we'll get is 15. So our labor units will be 15. If you want to find the stationary point and the corresponding coordinate, you simply get this 15 and put it into the average product of labor, not the first derivative. You get this 15 and substitute labor 
in this average product of labor function. All right, since we are only interested in just finding the amount of labor that will maximize average product and not really finding the actual average product at that level, we'll do that later in the third question or problem. For now, we have found the amount of labor. All we need is to check whether indeed this 15 units of labor is the one that maximizes average product of labor. And to check if it is the one that maximizes average product, we need to check using second order condition. And what we expect is to find our second order derivative evaluated at 15 being negative. If the second order derivative evaluated at a given stationary point is negative, then the function is maximized. If it is positive, the function is minimized. So we go ahead and use our second order derivative. So we are differentiating the first derivative, this one. So we are differentiating the first derivative. So derivative of this function will be negative 0.4. And since negative 0.4 is a constant, even if I evaluated it at labor of 15, it will remain negative 0.4 and will be a negative. So since it is a negative, 15 units of labor will be the one that will maximize the average product of labor. So we have found the level of uh, output or the workforce that maximizes the average product of labor. Let's go ahead and look at the third problem. In the third case or problem, we are required to calculate the marginal product of labor and the average product of labor at the value of labor that we found in part two. And then we are required to indicate our observation. So in part two, we found the value of labor or the workforce to be 15. So we need to determine how much marginal product we'll have at the labor of 15 and how much average product we'll have at a labor of 15. Let's start by finding the marginal product of labor, which is the derivative of the total product function with respect to labor. In short, when you get the first derivative of the total product function, the resulting function is called the marginal product function. So let's go ahead and differentiate the total product function. Doing that, we'll have 12L minus 0.6L squared. We are required to find the, or to calculate the marginal product at the labor of 15, which we found in part two. So we'll go ahead and substitute 15, wherever we see L in the marginal product function. So doing that, we'll have 12 times 15, minus 0 0.6 open brackets 15 close the bracket squared simplifying this will give us 180 this part will give us 180 minus 135 and 180 minus 135 will give us 45 so at the labor units of 15 employed the marginal product of labor at that 15th unit of labor will be 45 now let's go ahead and find the average product of labor at 15 units of labor. So average product of labor, we already found the function to be 6L minus 0.2L squared. Wherever I see L, I'll substitute and put my 15. So doing so will give us 90 minus 45. This part 6 times 15 will be 90 and 15 squared times 0 0.2 will be 45. So there's a negative in the middle. So it will be 90 minus 45, and this will give us average product of labor, which is 45. And from our observation, we see that marginal product of labor and average product of labor are equal. So what we observe is that at labor equal 15 units, our marginal product of labor is equal to the average product of labor. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you have questions, send an email to muawelias at gmail.com or better still, you can send a WhatsApp message to the number showing on your screen. I'll see you in uh, part four where I'll take you through another application example and we'll call that example number three. See you in the next video.